In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Photoshop to brainstorm for your photo stitch project. So, first thing up, you need to open up Photoshop, which is located in the application bar with PS for Photoshop. So we'll click on that. It might take you a little bit of time to open up. And it should open up with your GoLossal login the same way that Lightroom does, because they're all a part of the Adobe suite. Then what you're going to do is you're going to come up here to new file and you're going to click on new file. There is a variety of custom ways that you can, that are already set up for you to create in Photoshop. But what we're going to do is we're going to set up our own. So first off, let's rename it to rename it to photo stitch brainstorming and we're going to change the size so i'm going to tell it that i want it to count in inches because i think that's easier i want it to be horizontal instead of vertical so i'm going to click it so it's horizontal and the size that we want this we're going to make this pretty large uh, we're going to try to make it four times as large as the size that we're printing on and we're going to print on half sheets of paper so we're going to make it roughly 22 inches wide by 17 inches high. And you're going to come over to the resolution and you're going to put the resolution up to 300. That way, when you put your images in, there'll be nice large images. Once we have that all set up, you're going to come to the very bottom and you're going to press create. And that'll create a page for you guys to work on. That is 22 inches, and we can kind of see at the top here it's counting to 22 inches wide by 17 inches tall. I'm going to play around with this, and we're going to edit a couple of things. Uh, first thing I want to show you is on the right side is our layers palette. We can see that right here we're on the background layer, and it is locked. Let me say that it's in the layers. And I can create new layers, and this is where we'll add in our pictures. This may or may not be open if it's not. Up at the top, there's this like kind of more portion, and I can close this so it's a little bit smaller, or I can open it so it's a little bit larger. Right now, we'll open it so we can see the layers, but I often close that when I get to work in. I think what I want to do is I'm going to unlock this first. So I'm going to unlock this so we can work on it, and I don't like working on white, just because I think white is pretty blinding. Uh, I actually like changing the background to a dark color so that my pictures stand out and so that I know uh, that my colors are the colors that I want to see. But that's up to you. You can keep it white if you want. Um, over on the left side, this is our tools bar. I'm going to change my tool to the uh, to the paint bucket tool. It can be on the gradient. Uh, it might be hidden under the gradient tool, which looks like a little gradation. They're all both part of the same kind of tool because they just pour something. So I'm going to change it to the paint bucket tool. And at the bottom is our colors. So I can click on one of these to change my color and a color picker will come up and I can tell it what color I want. I want it a nice, nice solid black. And I can press OK. Then all I'll do is I'll click in the background and it'll create that black. You could create, uh, keep it white if you want to. I just like it black. You can keep it another color, but again, we are, it doesn't matter what color it is. We just need something we can put our photos on top of. Once I'm happy with my background, I'm going to come back to my layers palette and I'm going to lock my background so I don't accidentally draw on my background at all. Then what we need is we need some pictures. So I'm going to make this a little bit smaller and I'm going to uh, zoom this out so I can see where I'm placing things. So we can see my background and I can see here's my photos and I'm in a second I'm going to drag and drop them into the file. But first I want to see my entire canvas so I know where I'm dragging and dropping my photos. So another tool that's helpful is down near the bottom, it is the zooming tool, which looks like a little magnifying glass. And if I click and uh, if I click, it'll zoom out, or I can change its properties up at the top to the plus version and I can zoom in. I can also click and drag. And you can see that it will resize accordingly. So I'm going to put this relatively big so I can see where the edges are so that I know where I'm putting my pictures. So I'm going to drag in four different pictures. Uh, you could do four different pictures, or you can do four of the same pictures except do four different uh, drawings of how you're going to stitch. 
I already know which four I'm questioning, and I've already edited them to be black and white or color, depending on what I think might look best. You might change this later and have to re-upload things, but I'm pretty happy with these. So I'm going to add in a picture. And you can see it adds it, and it makes it as large as it possibly can. You can size this down by going to the corners of the bounding box and dragging this. And you can see that it resizes my image. We want to resize this so that we can add in four images. So I'm going to put in one right there. And when I'm happy, I'm going to come up to the top bar. And at the top bar, there's going to be a little check mark and a um, kind of an Xing mark. So I can tell it that I'm happy with the, the transforming that I'm doing, the ch changing sizes. And I put it in there. So that looks good. And you can see that it made a new layer for that image. And I'm going to lock those in a bit just in the same way that I locked the background, but we'll wait until happy with their, their placements. So let's add in a couple more images. And we'll resize this. I'm going to press OK. I'm going to add in this image. And I'm doing a couple color ones, a couple black and white ones to get a feel of, you know, am I happy with color or am I happy with black and white? So there we go. We have four images, and I placed them in here and arranged them so that there's like a little bit of a barrier so I can tell which of the four are, but not so small that I have made them too tiny for this space. If I decide that I want to resize or move these, what I will do is I will find the layer that I want to work on, and you can toggle on and off the visibility. You can see I turned off the visibility and turned on the visibility by clicking this little I button of these hands. Uh, so I know that I'm going to be resizing the hands. Then I'm going to click on Edit, and then come down here to Transform and Scale. That will allow me to go back to resizing this or moving this around. And when I'm happy with where I moved it, or if I uh, decide to cancel what I moved, we'll come back to the top just as before, and I'll accept or I will cancel those changes but I'm pretty happy with where these are. So I'm going to come down here, and I think I'm going to lock each of these layers. So I'm going to click on each layer, and I'm going to lock them so I don't accidentally draw on them or make any changes to these pictures themselves. The drawing that I'm going to do is I'm going to do on a layer above. I'm going to go to the very top, and then I'm going to click the New Layers button, which is like a piece of paper with a, uh, a plus sign. And if you hover over any tool, it'll tell you usually what that tool does. So this will create a new layer. And I can change where that's located, but I want to drag it to the very top so that's on top of everything. And that's going to be my sketching layer. So I'm going to, I'm going to make this nice and large. I'm going to zoom this in a little bit more so I can see where I'm working. And the reason why I made this on a new layer is so that when I make changes to it, I can it's not going to be editing and changing the picture itself. The next tools that we're going to use is over on the left side. The two tools that we're going to be using most prominently is the brush tool, which is quick button B. And you can kind of see as I uh, the example shows that it is B. And if you click and drag, it makes marks, makes lines, according to how big our brush is. We're also going to use the eraser tool that looks like an, a, a little like uh, rubber eraser. And it's just like the brush, except it erases lines. And that's quick button E if you want to start learning those buttons. But I'm going to start off with the brush tool. Then I'm going to come up to the top, and I'm going to change its settings. We're going to make sure that its opacity is 100% so that it's drawing 100% of color down. I'm going to put it on. Uh, we can see that there's different different kinds of brushes. We'll put it on the most simple. We'll put on general and we'll put a hard round brush, which means that it is a round shape. Its hardness is at 100%. And our size, we're going to vary between, oh, 10 pixels to like uh, 20 pixels. And you can click and drag and move those around. If we make it too big, 
then it'll be too big for what we're doing. And we are gonna be stitching little pieces of string. So I think it works best if you work on a smaller area. So somewhere between 10 to uh, 20 pixels. I'll, we'll start off at like, 15. I'm gonna go with 15. And so you can see, as I click around, it makes marks. And as I click and drag, it'll make lines. If I want to undo those, I can come up to here, uh, up to edit, and go to uh, Command Z uh, to undo, or I can click this to undo that, or I can press you know Command Z to undo each of those strokes. And also, you can see I drew my lines. And if I'm unhappy with where something is, I can come down to the eraser brush, and I can erase different sections. And just as Lightroom, I can use the left and right bracket keys to make things larger or smaller, depending on what my needs are. I'm going to focus on the brush tool, and we're going to draw things. So I'm going to choose my color. And for this one, I think I want to add on wings to this figure. And I think it'll look good in yellow. Many of our uh, embroidery floss or the embroidery string or thread that we're going to be using is pretty bright colors. Uh, so choose you know, a color that works, something that catches your eye, but it, you know that it might change once we get to embroidering. But I'm going to play around with yellow for right now. So I have my figure, and let's say I'm going to draw in a pair of wings on this. So I'm going to click and drag. And I'm going to drag in some wings. And there we go. Again, part of why we do this on a different layer is because maybe I'm not happy with how that section is and I want to erase it. And notice how it only erases from this layer that is the wing. That's why we do it on a separate layer so that we're not drawing directly on the paper itself. And part of why we're using Photoshop instead of just printing these things out. So I could undo those. And I think I want to make this feel a little bit, there we go, more smooth. Maybe I want to clean up that portion right there. This doesn't have to be too accurate because this is just an example. But there we go. We have a wing drawing in. Say I want to make completely straight lines because I don't trust how shaky my lines are and maybe I want really geometric lines. So a way that we can create completely straight lines is if I click in one spot and then move to a different spot without clicking or doing anything. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down shift and then click and that'll make a straight line from point A to point B. Then to do it again, I will click in a spot move to the next spot that I want. And I think I need to, let's see, I think I need to zoom out just a little bit more so I can see where the other wing is to get an idea. So I'm going to do that again. I'm going to click and I'm going to move over here because that looks about the same amount of distance. I'm going to press shift and then click and it'll create a perfectly straight line. Then click and shift, click, shift, click, click, shift, click, click, shift click and we can say that this makes really straight lines if you want to go for a straight geometric sort of thing that's not always the best depending on you know what your design is but if you want a geometric feel or if you don't want to like really um stitch curves but you want to just stitch straight lines this could actually be really helpful for you so there we go. We have one more curvy one, one more straight one. Depends on what you want. Maybe I want both of these in these different sort of patterns. Remember though, when you are coming up with this, you need to think of the different kind of stitches that you're gonna do. And this is probably going to be like a back stitch or a stem stitch. So maybe I need to come up with a different stitch uh, for the top. And maybe I'm gonna create like a halo. And I'm gonna create a halo of uh, bed sheet uh, stitches or blanket stitches is what they're called. There we go. And so there we go. And then they'll do some, maybe some straight stitches.
So play around with it. Come up with a couple of different ideas. There's some running stitches, uh, some straight stitches. Remember to zoom out every once in a while to consider the entire design because that kind of like wasn't really thinking about the top here. So I probably need to extend these a little bit longer. There we go. So here's one design, all freehand with one color, but I thought about maybe a couple of different stitch methods that I could use. So there we go, we have one design and we're gonna play around with other ones. Another thing that could be kind of you know helpful, uh, let's say we'll do this one, is that this one I have an idea for a clock. I don't want her legs to be kind of like the clock arms, but it's kind of hard to draw a perfect circle just freehand. So I'm actually going to trace instead of uh, instead of drawing it freehand. So I'm going to open up like Google, and I'm just going to put in clock, find an image. I'll find one that kind of works. Ooh, this one looks kind of cool. So once I find an image that I like, I can right click and come to save image as, and I'll save that image to my desktop. Uh, or uh, if it'll let you, you can click and drag it onto the desktop. And that'll often create a uh, create an image. It might, just like this one did, be locked. So this one, we can see that it's, its file type is a, a WebP instead of a JPEG. So that's not going to be able to be added into this. Same, not the same type. So you might have to do a little bit of searching around to find like a JPEG that works for you. Um, but find something that looks pretty nice that you can trace. This one's OK. Maybe I'll pull this one over to the side. We can see that one's also a web. So it's going to take me a little bit of a while to find the perfect kind of clock that I need to uh, work with. But keep on looking, and maybe you'll find uh, maybe you'll find one that you can trace. And part of why I would want to trace instead of drawing it freehand is because then it will be slightly more accurate. So this one's a JPEG, so that one will work out just fine. So I'm going to drag this in here, and just as before, we can see that it created a new layer. And I'm going to drag this below my drawing layer. And I am going to come up to edit. And I am going to come over to transform and scale. And I'm going to make this nice and big. I'm going to try to line it up so it would be drawing in that same spot where this person's like legs are going to be and over to their head. And when I'm happy, I'll press OK. And you can see I can toggle this on and off to get an idea of where they're going to be. And I think that's actually pretty cool. Now, the reason why I did that is because I'm going to use this as a template. And I think this time I'm going to use red. We can see I can choose my colors over here as well. Um, I think reds are pretty bright. And I'm going to use that with brush. I'm going to come back to this my drawing layer, and I'm going to use this as my template. And so I think I'm going to use a running stitch this time. And I am drawing in the border of this using a running stitch method. And this will give me a much more accurate circle. And this is helpful if I want to draw something that you know I can't naturally draw, um, that I'm not really good at. I'm going to like zoom in. I'm gonna trace over this spot, and this time I'm gonna go back to my like trusty gold. Come back to my brush, and I think I'm just gonna fill this these sections in. And I think the stitching method that I'm going to use probably eventually is something like a satin stitch where I stitch like the outline and I go over a couple of times. We'll see, it'll depend.
And I actually don't even think that I want to do all the letters or all the numbers. I just want to do some of them. We'll zoom back out so you guys can see where I'm going. So I can turn off the visibility of this layer by clicking that little eyeball. And we can see where I'm going with this. And I'm actually, I'm pretty happy with where its placement is. If I wasn't happy and I wanted to move this around, something that I can do is over in my layers, I can go to the lasso and I have the lasso tool. And I'm going to lasso around everything that I want to move. So I'm just clicking and then I'll get it back to the beginning and I'll let go and it'll create a selection. Then I can come to edit and transform and scale. And I'm going to resize this to the size that I want this. I want her foot directly at 12. And I want it big enough to fit her entirely in there. I like that. I think that looks pretty cool. So I'll press OK. And then I can come to select and then deselect. Sometimes if you have a selection, uh, what will happen is you can't draw anywhere besides inside the selection. So it's always a good idea to deselect before I go back into painting. And I like how this looked. I like how that 12 is, um, except I want her feet in front of it. So I'll like switch over to the eraser and I'm going to like erase everything out where her leg is. There we go. Oh, I need that part where her heel is. That looks pretty cool. So I think that looks pretty good. And I, I don't think I'm going to even put all the other parts. I think I'm going to like skip around. I'm going to put the three here. Put the six. I'm going to like dodge her hair just a little bit. And nine. There we go. And then I'm just going to do dash marks using the click and drag, click, drag, drag, and erase a little bit. And we can see we have like a, a rough design and I could probably play around with this more, add some, subtract some, but this is just a brainstorming. It's enough to get me going where I want to go. And then eventually if I choose this one, I will print it out and maybe add in a little bit more while I'm stitching. So I'm going to finish out drawing the rest of these. Some of them I'll do tracing, some of them I'll just do freehand. Uh, we'll do some patterns uh, and some other things and we'll see kind of where, where we get to. Um, at the end of this, after I finish each of the designs, I'll show you guys how to export the image.
And so there we have it. I have four drawings, a couple of uh, ones I like, some of them I don't like, uh, but I have four brainstormed out ideas. So when you're happy with it, what you're going to do is come up to File, go to Export, and then export it as. You'll click on that, and it'll take a little bit for it to open up. Once it opens up, it's going to have a preview there, and you're going to want to make sure that you, it's exporting as the right kind of file type. The kind of file type that we want is over here under PNG, or right now it says it's a PNG. So we're going to change our file type to a .jpg. That's a little bit smaller, um, but good enough for us to be able to see what's happening. And I'm going to change it up to, uh, to the quality to great, so it's the best that it can possibly be. And so it'll be nice and large, um, but something that we can turn in on Google Classroom so that we can check your quality. When all that's set, you're going to come down to the bottom and press Export. We'll get one more window. This window asking you where do you want to put it. So we're going to keep its name the same as Photo Stitch Brainstorming. And I'm going to save it to the desktop because then I can move it from the desktop onto anywhere else. And I'm going to press Save. It'll take a little bit for the file type to write. But then we're going to be good. So I'm going to minimize. And we can see that we have it right here. We have a JPEG of it. And we can turn this in. Now, to turn in, uh, to choose the picture that we want to turn in, what you're going to do is you are going to create a new document in Photoshop. So I'm going to open up Photoshop. I'm going to come to File, a new. And this time, I am going to change, change it to the one that I'm going to print. So um, I'm going to put to I'm gonna put photo stitch project. This time I'm going to put it as a vertical orientation. I'm going to put the width at 8.5 and the height at 11. That's standard photo printing paper. We're going to make sure that it's in inches, and we're going to have it at a resolution of 300. So get all that set up to where you want it to be. I'm going to come down to the bottom, and I'm going to press Create. And we can see now we have a regular standard piece of paper. So now I have two things open. I have the design over here, and I have the design over here. So first of all, we'll add in the picture that we want to print. The one that I liked the best is I really liked uh, I liked this image, and I liked it in color. I thought it was really fun, um, and I think I want to add on to it a little bit more. Maybe add on a little bit of extra movement and patterns and things to the background, uh, as well as uh, maybe clean up some of this lettering. But I think I can do that once I print it out. I could take some time to add on more here, but I think this is pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find that uh, file on my desktop. I'm going to drag and drop this one in. What we want to do is we want to print this just a little bit smaller. We're going to think about having it be half the size of the page. So we have half there, and then we have half of the paper to do some practice, a little bit of practice stitches, and maybe even do some practice doodling just in case. But we're going to cut this down eventually. So I'm going to press OK. So we're going to have it be half the size of the paper. If you're working vertically, then what you wanted to do is rotate your picture just a little bit. And if you're on Transform and Scale, notice if I go over to the side, and instead of just above it, I just kind of rotate to the side, I could rotate it. And that will be helpful if I was working on a vertical one and I'm trying to make it into a half page. I'm going to press OK. The other thing that we need is we need your sketch. You don't have to work off of your sketch because you could redraw it or you could freehand it, but I think it's helpful. We already did all that work. So make sure that you're on the sketch layer. I'm going to zoom in. 
and I'm going to come up to my tools. The tool that I want this time is the rectangular marquee tool. It looks like a dotted line that is a rectangle. And I'm going to click on that. I'm going to use that to draw out a box that's the size of the picture so that I take everything that existed in that picture. So I'm going to get it to that size so that there's this dotted line around it. I'm going to come up to the top under Edit, Copy. Then I'm going to come over to my new drawing over here. I'm going to come to Edit, and then Paste. And we can see that I have that same image, just as before, although it's on a different layer. Remember, if we want to resize, we'll come up to Edit, Transform, and Scale. And now I can move this and get it lined up to where I had it. It might take a little bit of work to get it exactly where it was at, but remember, this was roughly just a sketch that we were using. And so it just needs to be mostly there. And that looks mostly correct. And I'll press OK. Before we print this out, what you're going to do is you're going to come to the layers. You're going to come up to opacity. And we're going to change the opacity. We don't need it at 100% anymore. I'm going to drop it down to like 20%. You could probably even go lower. But what that did is it changed the color. So you can see it's a lot lighter and a little bit transparent. So now we can just use that as a template for when we print this out. You can use that as a guideline for where you're going to put what colors and where you're going to start putting the different types of stitches. The last thing that we're going to do is we're going to come to File, and then we're going to come to Print. We'll click on that and make sure that everything seems like it's in the right place and that nothing is being cut off. We can see that there's a little bit that's being cut off at the top of mine. So I think I need to move everything. Um, so I'm going to press like cancel and we're going to do the same thing as I did before uh, to move stuff. I can go to edit and then transform. I'm going to move this down a little bit. That's okay. And move over to my other layer, edit, transform, scale. I'm going to move my picture down just a little bit. That's okay. Uh, that looks good. Now we can come to file, print. Looks like nothing's being trimmed off. That looks good. And we'll hit print. Make sure that it's printing to whichever printer. Uh, it is in Miss K's room or in Mr. Long's room, but that should be good. Try not to print out a bunch of copies. Make sure that everything is checked off uh, by your teacher, and it should be good. I'll press print, and it should be done.